The logic cell is considered a standard benchmark in the FPGA industry. Each logic cell is essentially a single LUT with an associated register and is considered the fundamental building block of your design. As we have already mentioned, each Xilinx device contains an array of CLBs. Each Vertex 5 CLB has two slices. Each slice has four LUTs and four flip-flops. Basically, this diagram is replicated four times to make a single slice. That means that each Vertex 5 CLB has eight slices. Now, this is not very important. It just makes comparison of devices and device families a little easier if you speak our language. Now, combinatory logic is implemented with a LUT. Each LUT can implement any six-input combinatorial function of your choosing with a constant delay. So you quickly realize that the complexity of the combinatorial function does not matter as long as the function does not require more than six input signals. Now the flip-flop can be programmed as a latch, although that is not recommended, a JK, an SR, a D, or a T-type flip-flop. The actual flop is a D-type that's used in the silicon. So extra gates are used to convert it to a desired type if you choose to use something other than a D-type flop. These gates are just merged into the associated lookup tables. The slice also includes arithmetic logic implemented using the carry chain. Carry logic is used for the implementation of fast arithmetic functions such as adders, accumulators, subtractors, etc. The carry chain enables the fast propagation of carry signals to the next bit and or slice. This improves the speed of the function, saves general routing resources, and also saves LUTs since the combination of the LUT and the carry logic implements a sum and a carry output. Combinatory logic implemented in the LUT is implemented basically by converting the gate level combinatory logic into a truth table. LUTs map the combinatory logic into a truth table and then basically use the table as a ROM. So a LUT is basically a 64 by 1 ROM. By mapping the logic, which means optimizing the inputs versus the combinatory logic function into the output Z, we have a very simple method by which to implement combinatory logic. While synthesis tools will optimize your combinatory logic, one of the essential things they must do is map the combinatory logic to the six input LUT. This is essential because a function of say seven inputs might require a second LUT and if optimized improperly, might add a LUT in series. This of course would increase the combinatory logic delay and frequently impact system speed. Notice that the LUT is limited by the number of inputs and outputs, not by the complexity of the logic. In other words, we could implement a simple inverter, or we could implement a two input AND gate, or we could build any single output function of up to six inputs. For wider input functions, the outputs of two LUTs within a slice can be combined to make larger combinatorial functions such as a large MUX. In this case, a 13 input function of limited functionality can be made. The beauty of this resource is that it saves extra LUTs from being cascaded in series, which as I mentioned earlier, will likely hinder system performance. Now this resource also saves LUTs from being used to cascade logic and instead uses the dedicated MUXing structures. These hardware resources are very fast, especially the routing which is dedicated in the device for just this purpose. Your synthesis tool should infer this resource whenever necessary, but it might depend on your HDL coding style. For example, you might need to use a case statement. LUT-based memory is referred to as distributed RAM or distributed ROM. Recall that our FPGA process uses SRAM technology so the LUT is fundamentally a ROM. Now we can implement this by activating the configuration write strobe. So this is the write strobe that's used during the configuration of the FPGA to make the lookup table function as a piece of combinatorial logic. But by activating that configuration write strobe, we can actually use it as a little 64 by one RAM. Likewise, the core generator can combine multiple LUTs for larger memories that are deeper and or wider. 
You should remember, however, that each of our devices have dedicated block RAM, so don't get too carried away with this functionality built into the LUT. It is really only intended for small memories. In fact, 128 by 8 memory sizes are very common. Also note that the 6-input LUT architecture has two 5-input LUTs, which add more flexibility to your design. The carry logic is a dedicated resource for propagating carry signals. This consists of a couple dedicated multiplexers, an XOR gate, as well as the LUT to implement a simple carry chain. Remember, this is dedicated, so it saves LUTs from being used to build this chain, and it is also very fast. The way to access this resource is by using an arithmetic operator in your HDL code so the synthesis tool can infer the carry logic resource. The memory blocks, also known as block RAM, support single and dual port synchronous operations. In dual port mode, these block RAMs support fully independent port functionality for both read and write. Notice on the diagram we have two ports, the A port and the B port, with fully independent clocks, write enables, output enables, address, and data. Also note that there are separate outputs, data A and data B. Sizes up to 36 kilobits can be configured using a single block. However, this architecture allows it to be segmented into two independent 18 kilobit memories, if desired. Note that there is an available parity bit option as well. Vertex 5 also has dedicated cascade logic that allow two block RAMs to be configured as a 72 kilobit memory. While these blocks of memory are generally spread out across the die in columns, this feature allows for larger memories to be made and enables higher performance. Also note that these block RAMs have dedicated FIFO logic associated with each block, so high performance FIFOs can be made without using any extra CLB logic. This table shows you the available memory configurations for each port. As you can see, some of the larger sizes support the parity bits without extra CLB logic. Note the various sizes of the output ports. Also, keep in mind, if you need a smaller port memory, you just don't connect the unused bits. One of the most useful features is that each port is entirely separate, independent, and configurable. So in this example, the input bus of 8 bits is stored in the block RAM, yet an output data is taken out in 32-bit chunks. The data width conversion is done automatically and without extra logic. On a side note, most customers use the Xenix Core Generator to build custom memories, like the ones that is described here. The IOB, commonly called an input and output block, consists of registers for clocking in or clocking out data. As you can see in this diagram, there are separate registers for this purpose. This allows the IOB to be configured for bidirectional IO paths as well. Each IOB also includes a three-state enable register to enable double data rate applications, but this is not shown. But all these features are, of course, optional. Note, each input and output path can be combinatorial or registered. While this is optional, experienced designers recognize the significant benefits of always registering the input paths to the FPGA and likewise registering their output paths. This allows for improved system speed and better design reliability. Each register can have a separate clock and clock enable signal, but the set and the reset signals must be shared between these registers. This is important since your HDL coding style will have to reflect this behavior if your synthesis tool is going to infer the ILB registers. This is necessary because these registers are considered separate from the CLB registers. Included with each ILB is the ability to select each IO pin with a different IO standard. The default IO standard will vary by device family because each device is built at a different technology. Each pin also supports a programmable slew rate. Slow slew rate is the default, and careful use of fast slew rate is always recommended because it makes the design more susceptible to ground bounce. For more information about the supported I.O. standards, please refer to your device's data sheet. Also included is the built-in CERTES logic. These resources are not incorporated with every I.O.B., so take the time to plan the layout of pins that will be using the CERTES functionality. 
To find out which pins include the CERTES circuitry, refer to the device data sheet. The CERTES circuitry can be programmed as input or output. The I CERTES allows the user to divide by up to 10, while the O CERTES supports multiplication by up to 10.